So much can happen in a split second. It can be the difference between gold and silver, success and failure. Within a split second, lives can be changed forever, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. This is especially true when working with power tools like table saws. With sharp saw teeth spinning at well over 100 miles per hour, it takes only a split second for a mistake to happen. And in that split second, an accident can occur that may have years of long-term serious consequences. The sad truth is each year many serious injuries and disabilities are attributed to accidents with table saws. But what's even sadder is the fact that these accidents need not happen. According to investigations made by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, many accidents occur while table saws are being operated improperly and or without protection provided by the blade guard. The reality is that when the proper preparation and care are exercised and safe operating procedures are followed, the chances of accidental injury are greatly reduced. The Power Tool Institute, in cooperation with Underwriters Laboratories and the Consumer Product Safety Commission, is committed to promoting the safe and proper operation of power tools. PTI has produced a series of presentations on the safe operation of electric power tools. This particular program focuses on table saws. Table saws are manufactured in accordance with nationally recognized UL ANSI safety standards. You should look for a mark of safety from UL or another nationally recognized testing laboratory when purchasing a table saw or other electric power tool. It is the PTI member company's commitment to the safe operation of table saws which prompted the production of this table saw safety video. We'll show you the basics of what you need to know about safely operating electric table saws. Hopefully, by investing a little bit of time now watching this presentation, you'll eliminate a possible lifetime problem because of what can happen in only a split second. Of course, this presentation is not meant to replace the information and advice contained in the instruction manual. Be sure you completely read and understand the instruction manual and any warning labels before using your table saw. The instruction manual is also the first place to look if you have any questions. Well, let's get started. First, we're going to ensure that the workspace is properly set up and arranged. A table saw should be used only in a well-lit area that is free from distractions. You want to avoid working in places where bystanders, children, or pets may disturb you and break your concentration. The workspace should also be clean and dry. Cluttered work areas are accidents waiting to happen. Floors should not be slippery, and there should be nothing around the working area that could cause you to slip, trip, or fall. If you need to use an extension cord, be sure it is listed by UL or another nationally recognized testing laboratory and is adequate for the power requirements of the saw as indicated in the product instruction manual. Doing so will prevent motor burnout. Underpowering a saw can be expensive and dangerous. Also check that the insulation is intact and not cracked or fraying. Of course, you never want to run an extension cord through any standing water. And make sure the cord is routed so that it doesn't pose any tripping hazards. Never alter the plug to fit the electrical socket. This defeats the safety features built into the saw's electrical system. Either use a different receptacle or have a qualified electrician install the appropriate receptacle. With the work area free from potential hazards, we can now turn our attention to the operator to be sure he or she is properly attired. When using a table saw, avoid loose-fitting clothing or dangling objects like jewelry or neckties. Long hair should be tied back and long sleeves should be rolled up above the elbows. We want to be sure that nothing can be caught in rotating parts and possibly drag you into the blade. Additionally, you should wear non-skid closed toe shoes, a dust mask, and safety glasses. Keep in mind the sawing operation can be very noisy, so it's a good idea to protect your hearing and use earplugs. And it goes without saying that you should never operate a table saw or any other power tool when you are tired or when you are under the influence of drugs, alcohol, or prescription medications. Now let's take a look at the basics of making cuts using a table saw. Your saw should be securely fastened to either a stand or workbench to keep it from tipping or sliding during operation. Always be sure the saw is in good working order before beginning any project. 
So with the machine unplugged, do a visual check to see that no parts are loose and that nothing is broken. If any part is missing, malfunctioning, or damaged, do not use the saw until that part is repaired or replaced. This is particularly true for blade guards. Many people remove the blade guards, thinking they're more trouble than they're worth. But consider that according to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, over 90% of table saw injuries are to the hand or finger. These injuries include cuts, 65%, fractures, 11%, and even amputations, 9%. Using a blade guard, along with proper technique, can eliminate many of these injuries. Clear the table saw of any wood scraps or tools. When it is time to plug in the saw, be sure the power switch is in the off position to eliminate the chance of accidental startup. A table saw is intended to cut wood, wood-like, or plastic materials. You can cut through the workpiece or cut partially through, making a non-through cut. There are two basic types of through cuts, cross cuts and rip cuts. When cross cutting, you are cutting the wood across the grain. This cut is performed with the blade elevated a bit higher than the thickness of the workpiece, and you use the miter gauge. You must hold the edge of the workpiece firmly against the miter gauge, then slowly push it forward through the blade. Never use the rip fence as a stop or length gauge. If the workpiece is too small to be safely supported by the miter gauge, Use a wood facing attached to the miter gauge or some other cross-cutting jig or fixture. In order to keep your fingers away from the blade, the workpiece must be clamped to the miter gauge. Miter cuts are cross-cuts cut at an angle other than 90 degrees. The miter gauge is set for the desired angle and the cut is made in the same fashion as a cross-cut. Rip sawing is cutting with the grain of the wood or down the length of the workpiece. Again, the blade is elevated to a height just above the thickness of the workpiece, but this time the rip fence is used to control the width of the cut. Make sure the rip fence is parallel to the blade and securely locked in place. When ripping, you should apply the feed force to the portion of the workpiece between the saw blade and the rip fence. Use one hand to push the workpiece forward and the other hand to hold the workpiece against the fence. Never push the workpiece into the side of the blade. This can result in the workpiece binding and kicking back. Whenever possible, the forward feed hand should straddle the rip fence while pushing the workpiece through the blade. A special type of rip cut is a bevel rip cut. When performing a bevel rip cut, always place the fence to the side opposite of the blade tilt. Bevel ripping with the guard tilted toward the fence may not allow the use of the push stick and will wedge the workpiece between the blade and the fence. On this particular table saw, the blade tilts to the right. Just as you would with straight rip cuts, you should apply the feed force to the portion of the workpiece between the saw blade and the rip fence. Use one hand to push the workpiece forward and one hand to hold the workpiece against the fence. Never rip cut a workpiece that is twisted, warped, or does not have a straight edge. Otherwise, the workpiece may wedge between the blade and the fence and possibly cause kickback. Use a push stick for ripping widths of 2 inches to 6 inches and an auxiliary fence and push block for ripping widths narrower than 2 inches. Remember, if your hand or fingers are within 6 inches of the blade, you're too close to be able to react in the event of kickback and you may be injured. The other types of standard cuts you might normally make on a table saw are non-through cuts. These include dados, grooving, and rabbits. The main risk with these cuts is the fact that they are performed without the blade guard in place and with the blade hidden from the operator's view. These cuts usually require blades other than standard blades and table inserts and throat plates designed to match the cutter that is being used. Dado cutting cuts grooves across the grain or across the width of the workpiece. With a dado cut, the miter gauge should be used in the same manner as it is when making a cross cut. Deep or wide dado cuts should be made in multiple passes. Feather boards are devices that can be used to hold the work down on the table or against the fence to help contain the workpiece should kickback occur. 
Feather boards should be positioned so that they do not push the workpiece against the side of the blade. A groove is a channel cut made with the grain or down the length of the workpiece. This cut requires using the rip fence as when making a rip cut to support the workpiece. A rabbit cut is a step-like cut made on the end or edge of a workpiece. Here, the rib fence is used as a guide when rabbiting the length of the board. The miter gauge is used when cutting the short end of the workpiece. Plunge cuts are special types of cuts that you cannot make using the guard system. Plunge cuts are through cuts inside the workpiece area. Never attempt to plunge cut into a workpiece by placing it on top of the spinning blade. The workpiece will kick back. In this example, we are using four plunge cuts to make a pocket cut. Lower the blade below the table surface, remove the guard system, clamp feather boards or other fixtures to hold the workpiece down and against the fence. Place the workpiece on the tabletop at the desired location. Start the saw and let it come to full operating speed. Then slowly raise the blade until it pierces the workpiece. Then push the workpiece through the desired length. To stop the cut, shut off the saw, lower the blade, and remove the workpiece. Repeat as necessary to complete all sides of the pocket cut. Remember, the guard has been removed. Pay attention to the proximity of your fingers to the blade. In each of these types of cuts, the cutting blade is elevated above the work table to a height that matches the desired depth of the groove or rabbit. Again, these are cuts where the guard is removed. Always unplug the saw and return the guard when you have finished these cuts, and always reinstall the appropriate table insert. Do not assume that you or another user will do this later. Regardless of the type of cut you need to make, there are some general procedures you should always follow. Doing so will help control the two greatest potential hazards when using a table saw, contact with the saw blade and workpiece kickback. Kickback most often is the result of operator inattention and misuse of the table saw. The major causes of kickback are improper alignment of the fence to blade, improper support of the workpiece, a twisted or warped workpiece, a dull or damaged blade, and overly aggressive workpiece feeding. During kickback, the workpiece pinches the back of the saw blade, rises from the table, and is thrown back at the operator. Kickback can cause serious harm, having enough force to drive the workpiece through drywall or anything else in its path. Following some simple procedures and setups, kickback and possible injuries can be avoided. Use common sense. Do not try to cut large sheets that you cannot guide with the fence or miter gauge. Keep in mind that long or wide work pieces need extra support, such as an auxiliary table or a roller stand. This will keep the work piece from tipping during the cutting operation. And never try to cut more than one work piece at a time. Stacked work pieces can shift or bind on the blade, leading to unexpected contact with the blade and possible kickback. When cutting, always stand to one side and never directly in line with the blade. Never position your hands or fingers in the path of the saw blade. You could slip into the blade if you apply uneven or excessive force, or if there are any irregularities in the workpiece. Never reach behind and pull the stock to finish the cut. Always use the blade guard for every through cutting operation. The guard system includes the hood, splitter, and anti-kickback paws. The hood protects the operator's hands from contact with the blade. The splitter keeps the wood from pinching the blade. And the anti-kickback paws engage the material and prevent it from being kicked back towards the operator. The guard system is designed to reduce the intensity of a kickback and to keep your hands away from the spinning blades. Remember that accident reports investigated by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission show that table saw accidents typically occur when the table saw is being operated improperly and or without the benefit of the blade guard.
Never cut freehand. Use the rip fence for rip cuts and the miter gauge for cross cuts and miter cuts. Unsupported or improperly supported work pieces may twist or bind the work piece, causing kickback. The miter gauge and the rip fence should never be used together. They can act against each other and bind against the saw blade and cause kickback. Never use the rip fence as a length guide for repeated cross cutting. Use a miter gauge or stop block to provide safe work piece clearance. Start and finish the cut from the operator side of the table saw. Always push, never pull the workpiece through the blade. Never feed material from the back of the saw. Do not release the workpiece until it has been pushed completely past the saw blade. Never reach behind or over the saw blade while it is spinning. If kickback occurs, your hands could be drawn into the blade. This is especially true when performing non-through cutting operations where the blade guard is not used. When the cut is finished, turn the saw off and let the blade stop spinning before attempting to remove cutoffs, scrap, or the workpiece from the table. A coasting blade still contains a lot of energy and can cause a serious injury. Ongoing continued safe operation of a table saw also depends on proper maintenance. The product instruction manual details the user serviceable and maintainable parts. Always read and follow the manufacturer's maintenance recommendations. Keep the blade clean and sharp. Dull blades or blades with resin buildup tend to bind in the workpiece. And use only blades and accessories designed to fit your model of table saw. Of course, if the saw is in need of repair, have it serviced by qualified repair personnel using the proper replacement parts. Well, that's it for this introduction to safely using table saws. Remember, always read and follow the instructions, warnings, and safety rules that came with the saw. Use them as a reference whenever you have any questions. A table saw is a very useful and popular power tool. But don't forget, it can be dangerous and that an accident can happen in just a split second. However, when the saw is properly used and maintained, and when proper precautions are exercised, like using the blade guards for all possible operations, and remembering to keep hands and fingers away from the saw blades, the chances of accidental injury are greatly reduced. And that's true whether it's in the home workshop or on the professional construction site. We've tried to show a few of the types of cuts and operations that can be performed with a table saw. There are many others that can be safely performed when using the appropriate jigs and fixtures. Special operations such as panel raising, shaping, jointing, and resawing cannot be fully covered in an introductory presentation such as this, but are covered in other table saw books and videos that are available in the marketplace. Other safety videos and literature are available from the Power Tool Institute. Please contact us for more information. Here's wishing you safe operation of all your power tools and great success in all your jobs or projects. Thanks for watching.